Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is the another video in the three phase series. In the previous videos, we have derived the relationship between the line and phase quantities of three phase, and then we found the expressions of power in case of three phase circuits. And irrespective of the connection, the active power in the three phase circuits is given as three times VP IP cos phi which is also same as root 3 times V L I L cos phi while the reactive power is given as 3 times V P I P sin phi which is equal to root 3 times V L I L sin phi now we know that this power 3 times Vp Ip cos phi, this is actually sum of the power consumed in each of the three phases. Similarly, reactive power is also sum of the power consumed in, reactive power consumed in the three phases. Now, how to measure the power in case of three phase circuits is the major topic which I am going to cover in this video. So, we need to check that what are the various options in case of three phase circuits for the measurement of power. So, we know that this is expression of power in case of three phase. So, we will be focusing firstly on the active power and then we will see that how we can actually find out the reactive power as well. Now, for measurement of three phase power, we know that when we say power, power means active power. In case of AC circuits, active power is measured with the help of watt meter. Now, what is a watt meter? Watt meter is an instrument which actually reads the voltage applied to that instrument, current which is flowing through that instrument, and that is multiplied by cos phi, that is the phase difference between that two quantities that that is the voltage across the potential coil and current through the current coil so basically the watt meter consists of two coils current coil and potential coil from the name it's clear current coil is for measurement of current and potential coil is for measurement of voltage so current coil is always connected in series with the load and potential connected uh, potential coil is connected across or we can say in parallel with the load now for measurement of power in three phase we have three different choices we can have one watt meter method Second one is two watt meter method, and third option is three watt meter method. So, in one watt meter method, from the names of these method, it's clear that how many number of watt meters we are going to use. In one watt meter method, we use only 1 watt meter and that watt meter can be connected in any of the phases. Let's say I have a star connected load. 1 watt meter method. If we have a star connected load and we need to find out that what is the power consumed in this star connected load. Then watt meter can be connected in one phase and potential coil is connected between the phase and neutral R, Y, B. 
and what meter is represented like this by a circle. So we will have the measurement of power z phase, z phase, z phase. So the total power consumed in the circuit will be equal to or power will be equal to 3 times w where w is reading of watt meter. Now for this method we need the load to be always balanced. Balance means the magnitude of Zp in all the three phases is same. Magnitude and their angles they should be same. So this method has limitation that this one is applicable to only balance systems. Now balance system can be star or it can be delta. There is no limitation on this. It can be connected in star or it can be connected in delta. And then we can measure the total power by multiplying the watt meter reading with 3. Advantage is that since we are using only one watt meter method, so it is economical. Two watt meter method is the most widely used method. So we will discuss this in much more detail. Before moving on to that, let's take the 3 watt meter method as well. Now from the name again it's clear that we are going to have 3 different watt meters. I'm again considering the example of star connected load only. Same can be done for the delta connected load. There is no difference that whether this method is applicable to star connected or delta connected. They are equally applicable. First watt meter is connected in phase, first phase Zp, 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 current coil and potential coil is connected between phase and neutral. So this is our first watt meter W1. Then we will have the watt meter connected in if this is phase R Y B. So we can say this is our third watt meter. And second watt meter is connected in series with the second phase. So the total power consumed in the circuit is W1 plus W2 plus W3. Now since we have connected the watt meter for each of the phase separately. So this method is applicable to both balanced as well as unbalanced systems. It's applicable to both types of loads, both star as well as delta. Now the limitation of this method is that we are using three different watt meters which will lead to the expensive method. The cost of this method is quite high. So the measure method which is widely used is 2 watt meter method which is of our interest. Now in 2 watt meter method we will use 2 watt meters. So if we have a star connected load. R, Y, B.
थ्री फेजेस आर अवेलेबल टू अस जेड पी जेड पी जेड पी वन वॉट मीटर इज कनेक्टेड इन फेज आर वेयर करेंट कोयल इज इन सीरीज एंड पोटेंशियल कोयल इज ऑफ दिस वॉट मीटर इज कनेक्टेड बिटवीन आर एंड वाई sorry r and b not r and y so this is our first watt meter second watt meter is connected in phase y current coil in series potential coil between b and y so this is our watt meter w2 now this method is applicable to balanced on balanced star delta everyone every type of load so if we have to calculate w1 now what the w1 will read it will read current ir which is a current through this current coil and the potential which is there across the potential coil now what is that potential that potential is v r b v r b that is the potential difference between line r and line b and for w2 the current through the current coil is i y since it's a load so current is flowing through a, towards a load and the potential across the potential coil is v by b y is at higher potential in comparison to b it's v by b so if we have to write w1 w1 will be equal to current ir into v r b into cos of angle between i r and v r b so we need to find out that what is this angle <coughs> similarly w2 w2 will be equal to i y into v by b into cos of angle between i y and v by b so again we need to know that what's the angle between i y and y b v y b for this what we need to do from where we can have this we need to draw the phasor diagram so when we draw the phasor diagram we will start from the reference our reference is vr v by lagging we hide this vr by 120 and vb which is they all are at 1 1 120 120 voltage vrb so what is this voltage vrb it's vr minus vb so we have vr minus vb can be written as plus minus of vb so let's draw minus of vb this is minus of vb the phasor sum of these two is actually vr b similarly we have voltage v by v which is equal to v by minus vb 
वी वाई प्लस माइनस ऑफ वी बी वी हैड ऑलरेडी ड्रॉन दैट माइन वॉट इज माइनस ऑफ वी बी नो द फेज ऑफ सम ऑफ दीज टू विल गिव अस अ वैल्यू ऑफ वी वाई वी दिस एंगल इज थर्टी डिग्री दिस एंगल इज ऑल्सो थर्टी डिग्री नाउ डिपेंडिंग अपॉन विच टाइप ऑफ लोड वी हैव वी विल हैव द करेंट सो लेट्स कंसिडर इंडक्टिव लोड फॉर इंडक्टिव लोड ईच फेज करेंट विल लैग बिहाइंड इट्स फेज वोल्टेज बाय सम एंगल सो दिस इज आई आर आई वाई एन आई बी नो द एंगल बिटवीन आई आर एंड वी आर बी इज दिस वन इफ दिस एंगल इज फाइव देन दिस वन इज थर्टी माइनस फाइव दिस एंगल इज थर्टी प्लस फाइव so what we found that this angle is 30 minus 5 and this one is 30 plus 5 so we can write the value of w1 and w2 w1 is i r v r b cos 30 minus 5 w2 is i r v by b cos 30 plus 5 so it's not i r it's i y i r i y are same as line current both are line currents so if the system is balanced then i r is equal to i y equal to i l v r b is line voltage v by v is also line voltage which is equal to vl so w1 is written as v l i l cos 30 minus 5 and w2 is v l i l cos 30 plus 5 these are the values of w1 and w2 for lagging load so if we add them together w1 plus w2 vl il cos 30 minus 5 plus vl il cos 30 plus 5 vl il is common cos 30 minus 5 plus cos 30 plus 5 cos 30 minus 5 is let's use a formula of cos a minus b it will be cos a cos b plus sin a sin b sin 30 sin 5 then cos 30 plus 5 we need to use the formula of cos a plus b cos 30 cos 5 minus sin 30 sin 5 these two terms are cancelling out with each other vl il into 2 times cos 30 cos 5 vl il 2 times vl il cos 30 is root 3 by 2 cos 5 so w1 plus w2 is root 3 times vl il cos 5 now root 3 times vl il cos 5 is actually the value of power in three phase circuits so if we use two watt meters measure their reading and when we add them together that will give us the value of power consumed in the three phase 
बैलेंस लोड नो इफ वी सब्ट्रैक्ट डब्ल्यू टू फ्रॉम डब्ल्यू वन सो डब्ल्यू वन माइनस डब्ल्यू टू इज वी एल आई एल कॉस थर्टी माइनस फाइव प्लस माइनस वी एल आई एल कॉस थर्टी प्लस फाइव अगेन वी एल आई एल इज कॉमन कॉस थर्टी माइनस फाइव माइनस कॉस थर्टी प्लस फाइव वी एल आई एल कॉस ए माइनस वी अगेन सेम फॉर्मूला कॉस थर्टी कॉस फाइव माइनस सॉरी प्लस साइन थर्टी साइन फाइव माइनस साइन ऑफ दिस देन कॉस ए प्लस बी कॉस ए कॉस बी माइनस इंटू माइनस ऑफ साइन थर्टी साइन फाइव सो दीज टू टर्म्स आर कैंसलिंग आउट विद ईच अदर माइनस माइनस प्लस सो है वी हैव वी एल आई एल टू टाइम्स साइन थर्टी साइन फाइव नो साइन थर्टी इज वन बाय टू सो दिस डब्ल्यू वन माइनस डब्ल्यू टू इज वी एल आई एल साइन फाइव So this is our second equation. This one is first equation. Now, if we divide second equation by first, then what we have v l i l sine phi upon root three times v l i l cos phi equal to w one minus w two upon w one plus W two tan of phi equal to root three times W one minus W two upon W one plus W two, or phi is equals to tan inverse root three W one minus W two upon W one plus W two. So we can even find out the power factor angle, and then we can find out power factor as cos phi now this cos phi is a lagging power factor when w1 is more than w2 so that you can verify it from the expressions of w1 and w2 for any value of phi w1 is if phi is positive since we have derived these two expressions for lagging power factor load so whatever the value of phi is for that w1 is always more than w2 so when w1 is more than w2 then power factor is lagging power factor so if we just change this case that when the we have capacitive load so at that time current will be leading current so when current will be leading for in in instant i am drawing current over here ir current so then this angle between vrb and ir will be 30 plus 5 and this current will shift somewhere over here which will lead to the angle between vyb and iy As thirty minus phi, so basically W one and W two, they will have the opposite expressions. That W one will be equal to V L I L cos thirty plus phi, and this will become V L I L cos thirty minus phi. So in that case, the power factor will be leading power factor. So what we can conclude from here. so when w2 is more than w1 at that time power factor is leading power factor and from here it's a lagging power factor now we can have different conditions as well 
from the expressions of W1 and W2. I am writing them over here for ease. W1 is VL, IL, cos phi, th sorry, cos 30 minus phi. Now again I am doing it for the lagging power factor load only. VL, IL, cos 30 plus phi is the value of W2. So when phi equal to 60 degree, at that time W2 will be equal to 0. And whole power consumed in the circuit will be actually measured by W1. So power in the whole circuit will be measured by W1 and power factor of the circuit will be 0.5 lagging. We can have another condition that when W1 and W2 both are equal, W1 and W2 both are equal. So, this is possible when phi equal to 0. So, power factor is unity in that case. Power factor is unity. So, if power factor is unity, then watt meters will read same reading and we can have the case that when phi is more than 60 degree so when phi is more than 60 degree then w2 will read negative w2 will read negative since we can't measure the deflection on the, the analog meters in the negative so we have to either the reverse the connections of current coil or of the potential coil so that we can measure w2 so basically the deflection indicated by the wattmeter is positive since we have reversed the connections of either the current coil or potential coil so we have to note that reading as minus of the deflection So, this is the third possibility and between 0 and 60 degree we will have W1 more than W2 and that will be a power factor, lagging power factor case. So, in the next video I will solve the problems based on this 2 watt meter method. Hope this video will help you out in understanding the 2 watt meter method and how we can measure the power using the 2 watt meter method. But before ending this video, I want to mention one thing that we can even calculate that what is the reactive power consumed in the circuit by using this equation. So, when we have the value of W1 minus W2 as VL IL sin phi. Reactive power in the circuit is root 3 times VL IL sin phi. So, if we just multiply this equation on both sides by root 3, so that will give us the value of reactive power or we can say reactive power is root 3 times W1 minus W2. So, this is how with the help of 2 watt meter method, we can calculate the active power consumed in the load, reactive power consumed in the load as well as the power factor. If you find this content helpful to use, use please consider subscribing the channel. Thanks for watching the video.